So thanks to everyone who's voted on my community posts and it looks like a lot of you still want in standalone emulator setup guides. So I'm looking at Commodore 64 again, as many of you are aware, I love my Commodore stuff, and we are looking at a different emulator today. So in my previous videos, I've covered the most famous ones, Vice, uh, C64 Forever, and if you've not checked those out, go ahead and look in my playlist for those. But today, I'm gonna show you a different Commodore 64 emulator, and I'm using Windows to run this. So let's get into this, and as always, links are in my description. So first thing is, you are going to need to go to the link, and this is going to be for CCS64. This was the very first Commodore 64 emulator I used uh, probably around 20 years ago. So let's download this, and through this tutorial, I'm going to show you a few different things, including loading multi-disc games. And I'm going to show you a little bit more of that as this video goes on. So if we just scroll down, and I'm going to download the CCS64 version 3.9.3. This one was from 2021. Let's just download this and we're going to get an installation. So let's just drag out this compressed zipped file onto our desktop. Let's see what's inside of this one. So double left click and we got a release inside here. So let's just drag this onto the desktop and close this one down and we can also now delete this zipped file we just downloaded. Let's close this down for now and let's go into the release, double left click and we need to set this up. So if we just go to the install just here, double left click on this one. And if you get this Windows protected your PC screen, just go to more info and run anyway. It's a very trusted file you're installing, which has been around for, like I said, a very long time. Uh, we're going to go to next here. And your next option is where you want this installed. So in my case, I'm going to just keep this to default C drive and program files. If you want this to go elsewhere, just hit browse and just select where you want this installation to go. So for me, yeah, C drive and just below it, I'm going to just select default, just me to use this. So next, next. And if you should get a pop up just here, press yes again. And then we close this down. So that's your CCSX64 installed on your computer. We got no desktop shortcut, which is a little bit annoying for this one. So to do this, if we just go to the search bar, so really click on this and open file location and your shortcut is oddly placed into here somewhere. Let's just drag this shortcut onto the desktop and close this down and let's just double left click to open up CCS64 for the first time. So this is it. This is your main interface for CCS64. So you're obviously going to be what playing some games, so let's go ahead and download a game and get the basic system set up. So I'm going to download one of the latest games for C64, which is Leicester. And I'm going to leave a link in the description for this. And again, you're likely going to get a zip file. If we open up the zip file, just drag out the .program, the .prg onto your desktop. And if you want to create yourself a folder to put all your games in, that's fine. In fact, I'm going to do that myself. So right click on desktop, new folder, and I'm going to just call this C64 games, just to make things a bit easier. So drag the Leicester game into this folder. Okie dokes. This is obviously a .prg, a .program file. So to link this, all we're going to do is go to file, and we're going to go to load and run and desktop which is where my c64 games folder is double left click in here double left click leicester and it should automatically boot up and run for you different file extensions for c64 games will need different ways of loading so in this case a dot program is very simple but there's also dot d64 files which i'm going to show you in a minute so as it says, press F1 to skip. 
And as always, my trusty PS3 controller is going to show you how to play this and how to set it up. So right now, nothing's working. Okay, so to get your controllers working, we're just going to go to Options, Input, and just make sure you've got the settings that I've got, so PC Game Port 1, PC Game Port 2. And once these are set up, all I'm going to do is just go to Switch Control Ports, and this can change the ports on what the game is going to emulate. And I'm going to press Escape. And there we go, we now have a working controller. So as you can see, this is working perfectly. So that's your dot programs loaded up and set up. Let's just exit this. So I'm going to just close this down and let's open this up again. So next thing I'm going to show you is a little bit more technical. So you've got .d64 files, which are normally easy and very easy to load, which is just a case of going to file load C64 files and disk drive and you pretty much insert your .d64s in there. However, there are several C64 games which have many disks. So I'm going to show you how to load a D64 game and swap a disk when it asks for it. So for this, I'm going to head over to CSDB and grab a copy of Newcomer, which has got many, many disks inside. And I'm going to show you how to load D64 games and also swap disks. So this is now downloaded in another zip file. I'm going to drag this onto my desktop and let's open this up. And this is how many disks this game has got. Like I said, it's got many. So from here, I'm going to just open up my C64 games folder I created just now. And I'm going to just drag and drop all of these files inside of this folder I've created. Like I said, this is all about being nice and neat. Let's close this down. And let's also close down my web browser. No longer need that. So to load .d64 images, all you're going to do is go to File. Like I just said, go to Load C64 Games, Disk Drive, Disk 8. So once we're in this directory, we need to point this to where the newcomer game is located. In my case, it's on my C drive which is on my desktop. I'm going to scroll down using cursor keys, volume C. And from here, we can now find our C64 games folder. Which is going to be in my case under users. And from here, I'm going to go to Jamie. And then we're going to look for desktop, which is where my C64 games folder is located. And there we have it. This is C64 games. So once we're inside here, we're then going to see the newcomer game. So you've got many different files here, sites A, B, C, D, and so on. So I'm going to just press enter on this on my keyboard on the actual starting file, which in this case is going to be the bottom one just here, which says called sid.d64. I'm going to press enter on this and generally the ones you're looking for to load up these .d64 images are the programs. So once you get into the directory of the disk, you need to look for programs. So I'm going to go for a newcomer, which is program. I'm going to press enter whilst this is highlighted and this will then boot up into your game. Okay, so as you can see, it's asking for site A. So this is very simple. It's if I press F10, and we're looking for device 8, which is already there. Once we're here, just press right on your cursor. And once you get inside of this, just press left again on your cursor to come back out. And of course, it's asking for site A. So if we just highlight site A, which I'm doing right now, I'm going to press right on my cursor and I'm also going to be pressing right again. And on my keyboard, I'm going to make this work. So press enter. So press space and it's asking us to load a save game. I'm going to put no because I've got no saves. And now it's asking us for side B. So same process again. 
we're just going to go to F9 and press left on your cursor to come out and it's asking us for side B. So once we've got side B highlighted, press right and once we're here, we're just going to press right again on our cursor key and press space, space and there we go. So Newcomer is now up and running in certain many different discs. So yeah, a little bit confusing, but once you get the hang of it, just be sure uh, to use your right cursor keys and F9 to change your discs like I've been doing. It will take a little while for some to get used to it, but that's a part of the fun, eh? So next thing we're going to want to do then is we got our controller working like I've just shown you. We've got our .d64 games running plus multi-load games such as multi-disc games. You're going to want a bigger screen. So again, this is very simple. If we go to options and if we go to video, we can change the screen size to window size. That is by pressing right cursor. So this is obviously going to just enlarge the window screen. So at the bottom it says F3 to apply this setting. So F3 and there you go. But if you want a full screen instead of a window to do this, all we're going to do is go to options. If we go to general and your first option is going to be video, just press enter to enter this. And under your screen mode, we can change different screens. So for mine, I'm going to choose 1080p. So for mine, I'm going to be using say 1280 by 720p. And I'm going to press apply, which is F3. Now I'm going to just change mine to 1080p. So I'm going to stay on screen mode and I'm going to go to 1920 by 1080. And from here, I'm going to press F3 to apply this setting. And there we go. We now have new camera in full screen on Windows with a controller working. And we're ready to play some new camera. So to exit this full screen, all I'm going to do is just hit F9 again and I'm going to go to screen mode and I'm just say going to put this back to a window two times mode, which is a window and of course F3 to apply and there you have it. Okay, so to save your games, uh, save in load states, all we're going to do is go to state at the top and I'm going to press save and I'm going to give this a name and I'm just going to call this Lester. And we just save this. So it says free save. So let's just move a little bit further into the game. And let's load up that save I've just created. So go back to state. And from here, I'm going to go to load. And here is my save, which is in my C64 games folder. And there you go. So that's about it for the CCSX64 setup guide. Yeah, granted, it's a little bit more complex than my previous tutorials, such as WinVice or the other Commodore emulators that I cover. But once you get to grips with this one, it's actually not a bad emulator. And it also automatically saves most of your settings, such as my controller, like I just showed you. It's a good emulator, but it's not going to be for everyone. So if you've not checked out my other C64 setup guides, check those out. And remember, stay retro.